Viruses kill people. End of story. The flu kills people, COVID kills people. But for the rest of us, we develop herd immunity. We, de we develop the ability to take this virus in and defeat it. And for the vast majority, 95% of those around the globe, this is true. And when we look at people that have locked down and people that haven't locked down, we have massive data. It is not statistically significant whether you lock down or not. So why are we doing it? Now I want to talk about the immune system. Uh, Dr. Masihi used to teach for immunology. We both had years of microbiology, biochemistry, and virology studies. We've made it our life's work to understand this stuff. And here, I'd like to go over some basic things about how the immune system functions so people have a good understanding. The immune system is built by exposure to antigens, viruses, bacteria. When you're a little child crawling on the ground, putting stuff in your mouth, viruses and bacteria come in, you form an antigen antibody complex, you form IgG, IgM, this is how your immune system is built. You don't take a small child, put them in bubble wrap in a room and say, go have a healthy immune system. This is immunology, microbiology 101. This is not something, this is the basis of what we've known for years. Um, so what I'm seeing is when you take human beings and you say, go into your house, clean all your counters, Lysol them down, you're going to kill 99% of viruses and bacteria, wear a mask, don't go outside. What does that do to our immune system? Our immune system is used to touching. We share bacteria, staphylococcal, streptococcal bacteria, viruses. We develop an immune response daily to this stuff. When you take that away from me, my immune system drops. As I shelter in place, my immune system drops. You keep me there for months, it drops more. And now I'm at home hand washing vigorously, washing the counters, worried about things that are indeed what I need to survive. Let's follow the science. This is immunology, folks. This is microbiology. This is what we've combined together. We have 40 years of experience in this. This is common sense immunology. So quarantining and social distancing is worse for us, you're saying? It decreases your immune system. You, you can't build an immune system by, if, if someone has a, a reduced immune system, you, you hide them away because they can't build an immune system. If you have a normal functioning immune system, you need interaction. The, the, when a child's in a womb, you're in this protected environment. When you come out, you have almost no immune system. You develop that through touching your mouth, touching your eyes, virus, bacteria, virus, bacteria, immune response, IgG, IgM. This is how you build a strong immune system. Do you think people are worrying too much? Of course they are, but that's, that's from media telling them to. I am telling them sheltering in place decreases your immune system. And then as we all come out of shelter in place with a lower immune system and start trading viruses and bacteria, what do you think is going to happen? Disease is going to spike. And then you've got disease spike amongst a hospital system with furloughed doctors and nurses. This is not the combination we want to set up for a healthy society. So it doesn't make any sense. For instance, Nobody talks about the fact that coronavirus lives on plastics for three days and we're all sheltering in place. Where'd you get your water bottles from? Costco. Where'd you get that plastic shovel from? Home Depot. Those are fomites and carriers of disease. So you take your family sheltering in place that you think is safe and you're taking fomites with disease that they've shown that lasts three days. Are you really protecting yourself from COVID? Does that make sense to you? It doesn't make sense to me. And if I swabbed things in your home, I would likely find COVID-19. And so you think you're protected, but you've got fomites coming from, you know, Home Depot and Lowe's. And it's okay for us to be mingling in those situations, but we have to not go to work. It's okay for us to go to Costco, but not to church. Do, do you see the lack of consistency here? From a, from a microbiological, immunological standpoint, that doesn't make sense. If you're going to isolate people, you need to shut these all down because that's how the fomites are being transferred. When you go to Del Taco and you get a plastic bag or piece on your burrito from someone not wearing a mask who is just wiping their arm on your thing, do you think you're protected from COVID? When you wear gloves that transfer disease everywhere, those gloves have bacteria all over them. I'm wearing gloves. Not helping you. As your mask that you're wearing for days, you touch the outside of it, COVID, and then touch your mouth. This doesn't make any sense. We wear a mask in an acute setting to protect us. We're not wearing masks. Why is that? Because we understand microbiology, we understand immunology, and we want strong immune systems. I don't want to hide in my home, develop a weak immune system, and then come out and get disease. 
We have both been in the ER through swine flu and through bird flu. Did we shut down for those? Were, were they much less dangerous than COVID? Is the flu less dangerous than COVID? Let's look at the death rates. No, it's not. They're similar in prevalence and in death rate. So we are saying that our response now, now that we know the facts, it's time to get back to work. It's time to test people. Well, there's two ways to get rid of a virus, right? Either it burns itself out or herd immunity. For hundreds of years, we relied on herd immunity. Viruses kill people. End of story. The flu kills people, COVID kills people. But for the rest of us, we develop herd immunity. We, de we develop the ability to take this virus in and defeat it. And for the vast majority, 95% of those around the globe, this is true. And when we look at people that have locked down and people that haven't locked down, we have massive data. It is not statistically significant whether you lock down or not. So why are we doing it? Do you think it's safe for the state to lift the lockdown? Yes. Would, would it be safe for people to be yes. outside right now? Yes. I'm outside with no mask. Are the gloves and masks maybe a little bit too much right now? Is that kind of what you're saying? In some well, sense? again, do you, do you want your immune system built or do you want it not built? The building blocks of your immune system is virus and bacteria. End of story. That's how you build it. And there's normal, normal bacteria and normal flora. There's normal bacteria and normal flora that we have to be exposed to. Bacteria and viruses that are not virulent are our friends. They protect us against bad bacteria and bad viruses. So right now, if you look at Dr. Erickson's skin or my skin, we have strep, we have staph. All staph isn't bad, all strep isn't bad. They protect us against opportunistic infections. That's why when a baby comes out of the womb for the first three to six months, they're extremely vulnerable to opportunistic infections, which is why when we see a little baby in the ER with fever that's one month old, you do a spinal tap, you do a chest x-ray, you do blood cultures, you do urine cultures. But if you had a fever, I wouldn't do that for you. Why? Because that baby does not have the normal bacteria and flora from the community, whereas you do because you've interacted with, you know, you've gone to the gas station, you've gone to Home Depot. That's the difference. Normal flora it, we all need normal flora. And what Dr. Erickson is saying is when you are self-isolating at home for two or three months, you lose that normal flora. So I guarantee when we reopen, there's going to be a huge, huge amount of illness that's going to be rampant because our immune systems have weakened. And that's just basic immunology and virology.